Hi, I'm Hale. And I'm Alex, and today we're going to do the TBR book tag. So I have the questions <laughs> over here on my phone, and basically the TBR book tag is about, surprisingly, your TBR piles, which mine is like 134 books or something like that. Like, it's getting a little out of hand. I need to go through it again. True. Mine's, in, mine's definitely in the 100s. I didn't look at the number, but... Yeah. There's a lot of books on there that I'm not going to read. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing. Anyways, we're going to get started with the tag, so everyone is tagged. <laughs> yeah. Here goes, question number one. What book have you been unable to finish? So for me, this is Exit Pursued by a Bear by E.K. Johnston. I was supposed to read it for Reading Olympics, and I was listening to it as an audiobook, and I gave up. I got halfway through it, and I don't even remember what was happening. I remember the premise of the book, but I don't remember it at all. Like, I just gave up. I was like, nope, not worth it. <laughs> so for me, this one has to be Shining by Stephen King, and like, it wasn't that I didn't like it. Like, I just wasn't in the mood for it at the time, so I was like reading it for like two months, and I only got like halfway through. And then I had to return to the library, and I haven't picked it up since. So, someday I'll finish it, because like, honestly, it was good. I didn't, like, it wasn't bad. I just never finished it. Question number two says, what book have you yet to read because you just haven't had the time? So, for me, this one is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. It's literally been on my shelf for like a year and a half, two years, and all I hear about it is that it's, it's great, it's in my top ten favorite books, and I just haven't picked it up yet. Yeah, so mine's kind of like a similar situation to that. I've had The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness for like oh, that one is good. a year to two years, <laughs> and like 90% of people really like it and say that it's really good, and I just haven't read it. So, we'll get to it eventually though. Number three says, what book have you yet to read because it's a sequel? Oh, mine's The Dazzling Heights by Catherine McGee, and I wasn't going to read the sequel whatsoever, as I said in the series we're not going to finish, <laughs> and then I bought it at a used bookstore, so now I'm going to read it, but it'll probably be like a year from now. <laughs> True. So for me, um, the fourth Harry Potter book, which is Goblet of Fire, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, look at me go. And my goal for last year was to finish the whole Harry Potter series by the end of this year. By the, end, by the time I graduated high school, which is not gonna happen, so I've been like reading they just keep them. Here. They do, <laughs> and I finished the third one like three or four months ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. I still haven't read the fourth one yet, but like it's on my shelf. <laughs> oh, it's a struggle. It is. So I'll get through it though. I swear, I have to read Harry Potter. <laughs> Number five, four. We're on four. Four. It says, "What book have you yet to read because it's brand new?" Mine is Losing the Field by Abby Glines, which is the fourth book in the Field Party series. It came out on August 21st, and my sister and I were going to go get it, and she was going to read it before she went back to college, and she's been back in college for like three weeks now, and we still haven't gotten it. So, you know, we're getting there. We love these books, we just haven't picked it up yet. Yeah. So for me, mine isn't brand brand new, because a lot of the books that like I'm getting ready to come out, like, come out, like, in two weeks. Like, October hits and I have, like, five books that come out, like, right after each other, like, in a two-week span. I did have one book that came out, like, in April, so, like, brand new. It's still a hardcover, so it's still really expensive, so True. that's how, I'm, that's why I'm counting it as brand new, is Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young, which is, like, a book with, like, Vikings and badasses and killings and death, and I think there's some romance in there, so, like, literally everything I love, and, like, Vikings. Vikings! Who doesn't want Vikings? And, like, I just haven't read it. Like, I, it's literally just because I ha don't have the money for it, so <laughs> I want to read it. Maybe it's I'll audio book point. it. Number five, now it's number five's turn, says, what book have you yet to read because you read a book by the same author and didn't enjoy it? So I don't have a specific book. I have a whole author that I'd oh, rather die than read. This is Gillian Flynn who wrote Gone Girl, and I read Gone Girl, and I literally never thought I would hate a book more than Gone Girl until I read The Catcher in the Rye, but that's a different story. But... I hated Gone Girl so much that I've looked at other Gillian Flynn books and I'm like, I'd rather like poke my eyes out than read this book. <laughs> so um, mine isn't as aggressive as that. Um, my author that I read is like, it's kind of same situation where it's like, I'm not, it's an author, like just a whole author, not a particular book. So it's Nicholas Sparks and I read Nights in Rodanthe, which my mm. mom was like, that is like the worst one. And I was like, of course <laughs> that's the one that Alex freaking picked for me. Thanks, Alex. Was short. You ruined I had to pick a me. short one for you. <laughs> anyway, like I really intend to read Nicholas Sparks at some point because like all the movies, I enjoy them. I I like movies. romance movies. Like I'm, whatever. Beat me up. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say it. So I definitely want to read some because the other books are supposed to be really good. And I just I don't know. Nights in Rodanthe did not give me good vibes, so I just haven't read one since. <laughs> the next question, number six, says, "What book have you yet to read because you're just not in the mood for it?" 
All right, so this one I've definitely had on my shelf for over a year, and it's Flame in the Mist by Renee Adihi, and I just, I really intent was intent on reading it. My issue was I think I read The Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger, and they took me like three weeks to a month, and I just haven't had the, the mood to, you know, read The Flame in the Mist. <laughs> See, I like really want to read The Flame of the Mist. I just keep forgetting that it, it exists. Like, The Wrath and Dawn is one of my favorite books of I own like, it. all time. I know. Steal it. I keep forgetting about it, though. Because it's one of my shelves. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, I guess, I'm just like, oh, yeah, Renee Adia, she only read, she only wrote, like, The Wrath and the Dawn and the, the Rose, the Rose and the Dagger. I'm like, wait, no, there's more. <laughs> there's more. So, <laughs> that's my struggle. But anyways, for this question, my book is Black Souls by Nicole Castron, which is, like, no one knows what the heck that is, but it's okay. So I read Black Hearts, which again, no one knows what the heck that is, back in the day, uh, not even that long ago. I got it when it came out, which was like two years ago. And that's about basically Blackbeard and how Blackbeard Beard came to be. Yeah. And Black Souls is a sequel to that. And like the Black Hearts, like I really liked it. It left off at a good point and stuff. Like it was just an all around a good book and very enjoyable. So I got Black Souls and I was like, yes, I'm excited. I just haven't felt like reading it. And like, I don't even know why, but every time I look at it, I'm like, nah. Nah, and there's no real, there's no reason for it. If you guys don't see a trend here, like the books that I haven't read yet, I don't know why I haven't read them. I just haven't. Like, just, I don't understand it. It's just, it's just my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then number seven says, what book have you yet to read because it's humongous? So I had an issue with this because a lot of my books on my shelf that are bigger are only like 600 pages, which doesn't feel humongous but it's just like especially during the school year it's ginormous <laughs> so True. I ended up picking Renegades for this which Goodreads says it's only 556 but this thing looks beefy like I just don't want to read it because it just looks so beefy <laughs> and that's a lot of other books too and it, it's not out yet but Kingdom of Ash I am not anticipating because it's like 992 pages and like I just want the series to be done unpopular opinion True. <laughs> So for mine, I had to pick The Far Pavilions by M.M.K. And I doubt this is a book that's very talked about on Booktube because it kind of came out in 1997. And Booktube tends to ignore books that came out before, like, 2015. True. 2010. True. I mean, 2010 to 2015, there's, like, a couple. But, like, before 2010, it's like, nope, they didn't exist. <laughs> so. No books. <laughs> Unless it's a classic. But, like, True. we just don't care about 1970 to, like, 2010. Like, I don't know why because, like, there's plenty of good books. And the, Par the Far Pavilions is one of those books. It has fantastic reviews. It has, like, a 4.2 on Goodreads. Here's the thing, though. The Far, Far Pavilions is 958 pages. I have time to read that. And I found this because I'm currently in a long distance relationship, so I was like, oh, I'd love to read a book that like kind of I can relate to in that respect. And basically The Far Pavilions is about, I believe it's a British guy, and this takes place in India during the time when India is colonized by Britain. <laughs> so it's this British guy who comes over and he ends up meeting and they like falls in love with an Indian princess. And it's like their story and how they're star-crossed lovers and separated by distance and more. And I was like, oh my God, that sounds awesome. 950 pages. I was like, holy crap, that's long. So I was like, okay, what's the audiobook? Do you know what the audiobook is? The audiobook is 48 hours. <laughs> Who has Two time for that? <laughs> I was like, this is not happening. I was it's like, no, ridiculous. no. How is it 48 hours? <laughs> How? I don't know. I just don't have time for that. I don't have time to read it. And apparently I don't have time to listen to it either. So I don't know when I'm going to read it. Maybe Christmas break. I don't know. I'm like really sad though, because I was so excited to read it, but it's fine. So that's my humongo book. <laughs> And then number eight is what is a book you have yet to read because it was a cover by that turned out to have poor reviews. All right, this one's really depressing, guys. I was really excited about this book. I thought it sounded really good. It's Given to the Sea. I don't even know who it's by because I've ignored it for so long now. And it's under my bed. It's not even on my bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> but I was really excited about it. It seemed really good from, like, the flap. And, like, it's all about her, like, being, like part of the sea and I think there's like somewhat of a sacrifice and I started reading the reviews and the reviews were like this gets confusing in chapter two I was like kill me <laughs> it literally has like I think less than a 3.0 rating which is really bad really bad it was a tragedy when she found out yes. so my book is not as bad I picked next by Michael, Michael Crichton and like for those of you guys who don't know Michael Crichton is like the Jurassic Park dude Park dude so like think Jurassic Park dude but this is about like genetics and stuff which like I'm into that and stuff and it's about genetic engineering and I was like oh awesome and I was excited to read it I found it and then I don't know how I missed it but the Goodreads review for it is like a 3.49 which like is not bad 
It's not good. And I haven't read it yet for that reason. And I know that that's like really bad. Like it's so wrong. I'm so sorry. But I mean, like I just have other books that are like, oh, this is a 4.0. And I'm like, oh. I'm gonna read this one. <laughs> so last question is what is the most intimidating book in your TBR pile? So I don't put a lot of classics in my TBR pile because they just intimidate me and then I ignore them for like three years, which is this one. <laughs> I picked this one up. It was really pretty. I don't know where it is anymore. I think it's in my closet again. But it's A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. And Haley really liked this book. And everything you hear at school is, oh my god, I hated Tale of Two Cities. Yeah, it's because they all were forced to read it. Exactly. I think I'll like it. I just, it's Charles Dickens. And Charles Dickens is an intimidating man. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my book is also Charles Dickens. Because I, I really enjoy Charles Dickens. But like a lot of his books are really long. And this is one of them. I was in North Carolina this summer, and we were in Asheville, and there was this really awesome, really cute, like, used bookstore, so we went in, and I found this copy of David Copperfield by Charles Dickens, and it was illustrated, like, from someone's private li library, and it was, like, $15, That's so I was like, cool. oh my god, so I got it, and it's, like, 758 pages, and it's, like, Bible thin, and the words are, like, point two fonts, <laughs> and it's, it's Charles Dickens, so it's, like, its own monster, I just haven't read it, and, like, I really want to read it, but I'll, it's gonna take me so long, and I know it's gonna take me so long, so I'll probably, re probably read it next summer when I have time to conquer it. True. Because I want to conquer it. Point two font is absolutely the worst thing in a book. I know. Like, you can give me a long book if the font is at least decent. Yes. I agree. <laughs> I will read it. If you give me point two font, I'll look at it and be like, I ain't reading this. Yeah. I feel the same way. I relate. It's bad. So anyways, that's it for this video. But anyways, that's it for now, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.